I would like get home from school and he'd be like, you have to listen to this song. And yeah. I'd like go into his room and he'd like turn the lights off because he's like, like listening to music is yeah. like literally a spiritual experience <laughs> oh my for my god. brother. So he'd be like, okay, like turn that light off. Like you just need to like close your eyes and listen. Oh my god. Well, like when I first started making music, it yeah, was like, like production. It was like disgusting. Like, really awful. <laughs> disgusting. Like, I would never show anyone that stuff. A literal turning point where I just, I tweeted out. I was like, guys, like, I don't have time to be funny anymore. <laughs> what even? That comes so naturally to you, though. I was like, I d yeah, but like writing jokes and articles and stuff, oh, I just felt articles, like overwhelmed yeah. and like I didn't have the time to do it. If you yeah. like music, like you can keep following me. If not, you can unfollow me. And then like 10,000 people unfollowed me. No. <laughs> um, maybe I'll like program my Twitter to like keep tweeting things after I die. Oh. Hi, today I'm here with Chet Porter. So we met, okay, we met in New York and I was trying to think on the way here, when was it, like two, was it two years ago? It was a long time ago, I think it was, it, was it that, like, it was that, it was that, that Moving Castle, um, show, I think? Wait, Probably. the Brooklyn one, or the yeah. one before? Oh, well, that I was, think so. not too, that was, was pretty recent. Like, Williamsburg? Just I think like I was, like, on HQ. the floor. Yeah. Like, that was a messy <laughs> night. <laughs> it's so funny. So you were born in Toronto, right? Yeah, I was born in Scarborough, which is like, I guess like a subdivision of Toronto. Were your parents also born there and you have like all your family there or? Yeah, they were, I think. <laughs> really? <laughs> I, should, I should know the answer to this, but I don't. Um, but they're, my parents are both Canadian at least, I know. Yeah. And yeah, we've been there like our whole lives. And all your fa like extended family is also there? Uh, yeah, for the most part. I have one cousin who moved to Vancouver, mm -hmm. which is just, like, on the other side of Canada, but, like, yeah, my whole family... Oh, wait. <laughs> my sister lives in the UK, I forgot. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know. Clearly, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> no, but my sister moved to London um, a few years ago, so yeah. she's been living there. And she came home for a little bit, and then was like, actually, I really like London, and... And she just moved back to London again. Yeah. <laughs> so. What were you like growing up back then, like, in your teenage years? My teenage years, I was, like, super into, like, metal, I think. Yeah. I was, like, really into, like, metal and emo music. And I, like, loved to skateboard and, like, I guess, like, the classic teenager yeah. almost. How about, like, what were your favorite subjects back then? I really, I don't know. That's a good question. I really liked English. Oh yeah? Class, but I think it was because of the teacher. Like I just had such a good teacher and like she was so cool and really liked me and we got along and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know, most of my favorite subjects stemmed from the teacher. Like I had another, um, for my gym class, my teacher mm -hmm. was really cool. And <laughs> basically I didn't like school, but I liked the teachers. <laughs> <laughs> Did your parents push you academically? Um, at first they did, they were like, yeah, you gotta go to university, like, you have to, mm -hmm. like, do all this, and I eventually convinced them, like, give me some time, let me, like, work on some music stuff, and yeah. I'll, like, let me have a year off and work on things, and yeah. I did that, and then it just sort of happened again, I was like, let me have another year off <laughs> and work on things, and like, and that basically just kept happening, and now, like, I, I didn't go to university or anything, so, yeah. like, I mean, I'm doing okay without it, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of careers are they in? Uh, my mom works for the school board, um, she helps, like, the special ed kids, mm. and, like, the people that have learning disabilities and stuff. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, and my dad's a real estate agent. So he like <laughs> flips houses and sells stuff. Yeah. Like office buildings. Where do you think you got your music sense from then? I don't know. Maybe my brother. Um, he's not a musician whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, like literally plays zero instruments, but he was always really into listening to music. And I would like get home from school and he'd be like, you have to listen to this song. And yeah. I'd like go into his room and he'd like, turn the lights off because he's like like listening to music is yeah. like literally a spiritual experience <laughs> oh my for my God. brother so he'd be like okay like turn that light off like you just need to like close your eyes and listen and he'd like he'd show me like the new like Linkin Park album yeah <laughs> or like something like that and it was like it was, I don't know it was pretty sick and I just like got a really big appreciation for music 
that mm -hmm. way, I think. Yeah. And then I had a cousin, um, the same one that moved to Vancouver. He was like really, really good at guitar. And oh, wow. it was like so mind blowing to me. And I was like, damn, I need to also get a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so is that how you started before you got into bands? Was like through your cousin and then guitar? Yeah, and then I would the say band? yeah. Like I, I was one of those cousins who like saw my older cousin and I was like, damn, I need to be exactly like him. Yeah. And I think that's how I got into skateboarding too. <laughs> so like, I like just copying like all your relatives. basically copied my cousin and uh, yeah. So I, oh like, my god. Got a guitar and like started teaching myself and that's like basically how I started getting into music and I think that's why I like got into metal too just because mm -hmm. like. I think like the most fun stuff to play on guitar is like really like crazy yeah. metal riffs and like so how, yeah. I think that's just how that all went down. <laughs> how old were you during that time? I think it was I think I was 10. Oh, that's really young. Yeah, I was in like the <laughs> 6th grade or 7th grade or something. Mhm. Mm so that's like 10, 11 years old. Yeah. Um Yeah, I guess that is pretty young. When did you form your first band? Uh, my first band, I was in a couple. I think the first band I got into was like off Kijiji. Oh, mm -hmm. wait, Americans don't have Kijiji. Uh, it's, it's like basically Craigslist. Oh. Yeah, and these guys were like, oh, we need a guitar player. And I was like, that's me, I do that. How old were you, like 13 <laughs> on Craigslist? Just surfing around? No, I around? was like, this was like in the ninth grade now. So okay. I was probably like 13 or like 14. And then, yeah, I, like, got into this band, like, through Craigslist. That's chill of your parents um, to just have you <laughs> hang out with people from Craigslist Yeah, it was, jam. like, they weren't old. They were, like, my age. And, oh, okay. Um, it was super fun. It was, like, a metal band and, like, learned a lot about playing guitar in it and stuff like that. And it didn't really go anywhere. And then um, one of my good friend's bands had someone leave. Mm-hmm to go to university or something this was like a few years later and so I joined in on that and then we sort of did that for a little bit yeah and uh, we ended up signing a record deal and then that's when I like convinced my parents to like let me take a year off and oh. not go to university yeah it was super fun we signed this record deal and it got like really it got really weird they like kind of like started telling us how to dress and yeah weird things so and they we were really to be young more of like a boy band yeah and we were like really young like I was like 15 so it was or 16 or something so it was we were pretty easily like like wow this is like our dream mm -hmm. so they could like easily manipulate us I think and like turn it into something that we didn't think it was gonna be yeah so we ended up breaking up the band to get out of it yeah and then I was like oh damn like, but you did a lot of stuff like you toured with it yeah, we, we yeah. went on, like, little Canada tours and stuff, and, like, we, like, bought one of those, like, really long vans, like, yeah. a 15-passenger van, and, like, toured in it and stuff. It was really fun. It was, like, a learning experience. Did you have someone, like, mentor you because you were so young or someone who managed no, you No, it was then? literally just us. Just and, you like, talking it was so DIY, to, like, the, like, the, like, the lead label. singer, the lead singer of the band, like, um, was the one that booked all the shows. And I was the one that drove to all the shows in the van. Um, it was like so crazy actually yeah. thinking back because we were like 16 and like, <laughs> That's so like crazy. driving across Canada. Yeah. Um, but that van got stolen, right, or something? Yeah, it did. Uh, our old drummer, um, we kicked him out because he was like kind of creepy. He was like being weird to girls and oh. it was like getting really strange. And yeah. he was also like had some musical conflicts with him so we kind of like kicked him out of the band in a nice way mm -hmm. and he just stole the van one day and oh like God. we were like yo where's the van like what the fuck and then we finally found out that he had it yeah and we like called the cops on him and they were like yeah like we can't really do anything because like the van is technically under his name oh. even though like we I actually paid for like Damn. the whole van basically like yeah I paid like four thousand dollars yeah and this guy didn't pay anything and he like stole the van and I was like yo like <laughs> if you're gonna take the van like at least like give me the money that yeah. I paid for the van and he just like never Damn. answered me and I was like okay this guy sucks and, like Are he was a lot yeah. older than us he was like oh. four years older than us 
are you still in contact with those people? Like, are they still doing music? Um, yeah, the lead singer I talk to like very often. He lives really close to me. Oh um, wow. We go for coffee a lot. Yeah. And he's doing another band now. Um, they're called Spells of Vertigo. Mm -hmm. It's like really interesting, like really grungy, like raw rock music. Yeah. I guess. Um, super cool though. He's like, honestly kind of a genius like he's like really <laughs> smart yeah and, like really knows what he's doing with music and like mm -hmm. is also trying to be different and like not really care what other people think which mm -hmm. is like really cool um i definitely don't talk to the guy who stole the band <laughs> yes of course <laughs> um but actually like really recently he followed one of my friends on instagram oh my god that's so Did and like know? started like creeping on her and so she, I was like, damn, yeah. he's like still creepy. He still hasn't stopped with his creeping. Yeah, like he's just like constantly. Like six years later or yeah, whatever. Really. <laughs> I wonder if he still has the van. Oh my god. What if he did and he would find know. it in Toronto? And it's crazy because he had the van. Um, his drums were still at my house. And I was yeah. like, fine, I'm not, I'm not going to give you your drums back then. Yeah. And then he called the cops on me and the cops came and took the drums oh out of my no. house. And I was like... What the, like, do you know, like, the situation? Yeah. They were like, yeah, we do, but, like, we can't do anything. Like, we have to take these drums. And I was like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> sucks. So after that, like, band dissolves, how did you even start production? Uh, so. Like, producing, yeah. Yeah, the band broke up, and I was, like, sad about it. But, like, it was also kind of, like, I voted for it because this label thing was really weird. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, how do I make music by myself now? Like, I can't sing, so, like, I can't do, like, a solo thing. Yeah. And then I sort of just, like, like, I knew what electronic music was and, like, but keep in mind this was, like, the ninth grade or, no, never mind. This was, like, right fresh after high school. So I think this was when, like, dubstep was big. Like, Skrillex was, like a new oh. thing and like <laughs> so you found him yourself or yeah friends? it was like uh, like a lot of the music in, a, in electronic music that we have now like didn't exist yet yeah but there were like the Skrillexes and stuff and I was like okay this is like really cool I guess I could like try and do this mm -hmm. like it's creative and fun and so I like started making like really shitty dubstep songs like for fun <laughs> and like I didn't put them out or anything they were just like a thing for me to learn with I guess. So you learned like what, what were you using back then like Ableton or? Back then I was using Fruity Loops. Oh cause... so you just taught yourself do you watch tutorials or? Yeah so what happened was I didn't even have a computer I was like taking my dad's laptop mm -hmm. and I torrented Fruity Loops on it and then just started making like really shitty songs and then one day it got stolen out of my car shit just gets stolen from you. i know it just it got stolen out of my car one day and i was like fuck like i had to tell my dad i was like dad i got your laptop stolen like Damn. sorry <laughs> and then like a couple maybe like a full year later i finally got a macbook mm -hmm. and then i got logic just because I couldn't get Fruity Loops on this Mac. Like, you can now, I think, but I just, like, didn't know how to do it. I'm not very good with computers. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, I'll just get Logic and, like, taught myself how to use that. And, yeah, I still use it. And that's just, like, I guess how yeah. I got here. <laughs> but how did you start listening from, like, Skrillex to, like, the stuff you make now? It's, like, a kind of a big jump. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I... Uh, like, it was, like, I was trying to learn off of making dubstep type thing mm -hmm. but they were still really like melodic and like happy sounding yeah I guess just because like, it's always kind of what I've liked um or what I've liked making yeah. at least and then I guess like I just grew out of the dubstep thing like a lot of other people did I guess and I started like getting more creative with it and like not thinking too much about what other people are doing mm -hmm. and sort of I don't know it was, it was weird because I where I grew up with like I didn't have many friends that were like making actually I don't think I had any I didn't have any friends that were like making electronic music Damn. so like I didn't really know what was going on I was sort of just <laughs> doing things how do you think the stuff you've made you make now compared to like when you first started making music 
I think. Oh my god, well, like, when I first started making music, it yeah, was like. Yeah, like production. It was like disgusting. It was like, really awful. <laughs> disgusting. Like, I would never show anyone that stuff, but like, that's like the crazy part of it. Like, I feel like being a producer, like, no one's just like born good at it. Like, mm -hmm. you always are really shitty at first. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a thing. So it's like really just like a learning process. And like, over the years, I've gotten better I guess but like I still have a long way to go like it's yeah there's always things to learn and like things to get better at and like all this stuff was there like a turning point when you realized that you could actually do the producing thing full time or no. like put all your career into <laughs> no, it no there wasn't like I just like made songs and I I remember I put this like EP out online I still didn't know anyone mm -hmm. in like electronic music or anything and like it got like some plays and I was like, well, cool, people are listening to this. And then this guy was like, hey, do you need a manager? And I was like, I don't know what that is or what that does, but like, yeah. sure. And then, <laughs> so he started managing me and like, got got me like more into the like blog world, yeah. which like introduced me to more people and it kind of just like snowballed. And yeah. I think that's like how it goes for most people. Actually, how did you maybe. like, cause I guess the first time when you did the band, were you like scared of like record labels and managers and but this time you like weren't scared when you met this guy kind of like i'm i wouldn't i'm not scared of yeah like labels or contracts or anything i just think you have to be like really smart yeah. about it um like right now i have zero contracts signed which is mm -hmm. cool um, yeah i'm literally not stuck in anything um that being said like i'm probably gonna sign a deal soon mm-hmm uh, I won't say what yeah. or with who or anything, but, and I feel really comfortable about it. Like, I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. not scared. It, I think it's, like, a really cool opportunity. It sounds really fair. Yeah. So as long as it's, like, a, like, I don't know. You just have to make sure it's, like, what you want and, like, that's it. That you don't have to worry too much other than that. You wrote a lot of stuff, like, for, like, Thought Catalog, right? Oh, Do you yeah. Do you want to talk about oh, that? Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess, like, when I was in high school, I made this Twitter account. Um, I can't remember the exact handle, but it was like something, uh, like something Kevin. Because mm -hmm. uh, one of my best friend's names is Kevin. Yeah. And I started this Twitter account where I would like say jokes that Kevin had said in the past or jokes that I thought he might think of and stuff like that. And then I, after having this for like a month, I showed Kevin. I was like, look at this Twitter account. Like, it sounds a lot like you. Like, oh it's my really God. weird. And he was like, whoa, it does. <laughs> and then like, it kind of like blew up throughout my school. And like, everyone at my school started following this account. But, like, didn't know who it was. Oh my God. And then it kind of like, got viral like outside of my school. And like- That's crazy. I didn't tell anyone at my school for like almost a year. And then Could finally, I not know it's you? I mean, you probably like. Hang no, out I know. With him. Like, you would think, like, yeah, I know. I would tweet things while I was with him, and you wouldn't That's know. So was, ridiculous. Like, um, then I finally told someone. I think it was like my friend Deb or this girl Rachel or someone. I told them, and then it just like got out throughout the school, and everyone was like, "What?" Like that's. I don't know. It was like a mind blowing moment for everyone for some reason, and then like I don't know. I just like kind of accidentally stumbled into like writing yeah and like comedy sort of and we're you always into comedy i mean isn't everyone kind of like you, like i know but i feel like you're awesome. you're so so funny compared to like a lot of people out there i mean i i don't know really i, I guess i i in like primary school i was like kind of class clownish yeah but not like the class clown like i just yeah. love like doing dumb stuff and like mm -hmm. making people laugh and like I don't really know but it like I feel like everything that's happened with like music or like comedy or like writing it was all like accidental like I wasn't yeah. like really like I made a Twitter account making fun of my friend yeah and somehow it turned into this like writing job <laughs> how do you decide know. to write about like relationships and stuff I don't know I was just like what can I write about that's like 
something that someone would write about seriously and then make it like so dumb. Yeah. And that was like kind of what I did on Thought Catalog. And, you got like, a lot of fans from that, right? Like people just read your writing. Kind of. It yeah. was like really interesting. <laughs> like, yeah. And it's weird because like I kind of forgot about that because I don't do stuff like that anymore. So. Yeah. I mean, but I guess a lot of those people just know you as like a person now. That, did they go to your shows? Do you know like... I have, yeah. like, I definitely have some people who are like, oh, I used to, like, follow your, like, comedy Twitter account, like, read your college humor stuff, yeah. and, like, and now you make, like, super cool music, too, and, uh, like, I think that's cool that there's people that were just there for, like, mm -hmm. the comedy thing, and then the music thing happened, and they're like, oh, this is good, too, like, yeah. and they just decided to stick around, that's, like, super sweet. A lot of people definitely abandoned me because there was like a literal turning point where I just I tweeted out I was like guys like I don't have time to be funny anymore <laughs> what even that comes so naturally to you though <laughs> I was like I d yeah but like writing jokes and articles and stuff oh, I just felt articles, like overwhelmed yeah. and like I didn't have the time to do it and I was just like I can't do this anymore like I'm gonna be making music so like if you yeah. like music, like, you can keep following me. If not, you can unfollow me. And then, like, 10,000 people unfollowed me. No! <laughs> and what? I was like, yeah, but that's fine, though, because, yeah. like, it doesn't, it doesn't, A, it doesn't really mean anything, and yeah. B, like, if they're not fans of the music, then, like, they don't, yeah. they don't need to be there, I guess. Have you ever considered being more of, like, a personality? Kind of like Getter, how he has his own, like, YouTubes and Vines, oh, and he's, like, yeah. more of a personality. I think that's actually, like, super cool and I yeah. would love to do that but like at the same time I don't know I wanna I I'm just really focused on the music I think mm -hmm. right now at least so like I don't know I like to have fun and it's like I also like to film things so I couldn't imagine it yeah being like it would probably be really fun but yeah I just like I really really want to get like good mm -hmm. music done and like that's like all I think about really yeah. <laughs> so how did you first meet the moving castle people um oh shit i don't know i it was definitely online like i oh let me think for a sec <laughs> i don't know i think maybe i heard one of chris's songs mm -hmm. um or i like stumbled upon like volume three or something me and Chris had been talking and we were like let's make a song together and we like kind of tried to do that and then I think like Mark Johns was gonna be on the song too and it just like oh. it just like fell through and yeah. then Chris was like do you want to be a part of Moving Castle and I was like yeah that sounds sick like <laughs> <laughs> sure this sounds neat and yeah then this was like right around when they made that like first shirt that like oh, got okay. like super famous. Yeah. And then yeah, I don't know. And now they're like some of my best friends. Like I see them everywhere. Like, yeah. In, Actually, like, New yeah. New York and LA. That's like so cool to me still that like I see the same friends but like in different parts of the world. Like yeah, all the time. like this. <laughs> yeah, it's like so cool. Yeah. Like, we're in a totally different place than where we met. Right yeah. Now, On the other is, like, coast crazy to me yeah it's, it's it's such a cool community yeah like, i don't know i love it it's so neat how do you think you've changed personally since you start started doing music i don't think i've changed that much i think i'm more conscious about the way that i eat oh um <laughs> i've which, never heard anyone say that <laughs> which is weird i think it's because i like travel a lot and i like i eat a lot of shit food mm. and now that like I've been traveling for like a year, like playing shows and stuff. I realized like, oh, I eat like really shitty food all the time. Like, yeah. So I think the one thing that's changed is like, I try to eat better now. Yeah. Um, doesn't mean I do a good job at it. I, <laughs> I still like eat a lot of shit. Yeah. Food, but, um, yeah, like personality wise or anything, I, I don't, I don't think I've changed that much. Mm -hmm. Like when I'm home, I still hang out with the same friends. And yeah. Everything. I live with my mom still, <laughs> like, nothing's yeah. really that different, I don't yeah. think. It's just, like, occasionally on the weekend I have to fly to, like, L.A. to play a festival or something. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I don't know, it's not that different, really. It's, yeah. like, and I don't think my friends think it's that crazy either. Like, they're just, like, 
it's the same as them like going to work on Monday. They're just like, oh, you're going to work today. Yeah. Like, see you in like next week. Yeah. It's like I don't know. It's pretty cool. It's pretty casual. So. How do you realize that this is the time that you're gonna do your whole uh, national tour? Uh, like in your career. I didn't. <laughs> I, it was kind of just my team was like, hey, it's time for you to go on tour, and I was like shit, do we have to? And they were like, yeah, we have to. And I was like, okay, yes, we'll do it then. And like, I'm pretty nervous for it. Yeah. I've never done that before, obviously. So I guess it's just like, I have really nervous feelings about it. Mm -hmm. What What about it? I don't know. I'm the, like, there's a lot of worrying that comes with it. Like, I have to prepare a new set. Like, are, like, are people going to come to the shows? Mm -hmm. Like... Hopefully, I mean, like, hopefully everything will be fine, but yeah. there's just, like, it's pretty nerve-wracking, Yeah, I guess this is your first like, one, so... This is my first time where, like, I'm the yeah. the main event, yeah. or, like, the main guy, so it's it's really, I don't know, we'll see Come how it goes. a long way, <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't that's know. so sick. Should be fun, though, like, yeah. it's definitely gonna be fun, and, like... I'm, gonna... I'm trying to go to the one that Andre's playing, can't remember, what was it? Oh, he's, uh... Oregon, no, oh, Seattle. Geez. We'll just link it below. Links. So you guys can get the tickets. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, I don't know. It's it's going to be super fun either way. I'm going to play some new stuff. Yeah. I think, and like, it'll be, it'll be a cool time. I'm yeah. pretty excited for it. Even if like two people show up, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Last question. What do you want to be remembered for? What do I want to be remembered for? I don't know. I, I, I don't really need to be remembered. I don't think yeah. like this. Like people like when I die, like people can hopefully still listen to my music and stuff. But like, mm. I don't need to be like remembered in like an yeah. iconic way or like <laughs> like oh I saved the world or anything. Like mm -hmm. if my friends and family remember me, that's like good oh, enough. Yeah. So it's really sweet. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> And like you can always just scroll through my old tweets and and pretend well, I'm not dead. Old thought catalog. Yeah, maybe I'll like program my Twitter to like keep tweeting things after I die. Oh, wait. So it should. feels like I'm not dead. Yeah. And like I'll set up some music, like an EP, and like a couple <laughs> singles that will be released after I die too. Wait, that would be hilarious. You guys have to do that. That'd be sick. You'd so be people like, are like, is he dead? Wait, I c I don't really. <laughs> And I'll make sure there's like photo tweets too. So like, oh yeah, like at different places. I'm, you just yeah, like and it's like in, yeah. Hong, like in Hong Kong. But like <laughs> really, I'm dead. That'd be sweet. Oh my god, that's so funny. Thanks so much. <laughs> no problem. <laughs>